will be discussing about stability and control of an airplane, the aspects which needs to be understood in exhaustive manner. We will be putting extra effort on that. And there are some mathematical part which we will also mention, but it is expected that you will refer textbook to understand the mathematics related to understanding of this phenomena. If I take you back to airplane performance, let us understand one thing. When you are trying to understand airplane performance, we will have a different approach. We will see a, an airplane in a different manner than when you are trying to understand stability and control, we will try to understand an airplane, same airplane, in a different manner. For example, when I am talking about performance, even if there is an airplane, our approach in understanding it was through point mass model, that is we assume that all the masses are concentrated at the center of mass. Why? Because this was okay for us because we wanted to know the response of this airplane in a rectilinear motion, a response of this airplane for the given external forces. Right? No angular rotations were considered. Since no angular rotation was considered, so we are, we are happy with a point mass perception. And in that, the moment I talk about performance, this diagram was good enough. Thrust equal to drag, lift equal to weight. That was good enough. And we took each component, the drag, lift, thrust, and weight, and tried to understand the implication of this in terms of airplane performance, which are primarily takeoff, climb, cruise, loiter, landing, and maneuver. And of course, yes, we also wanted to have an understanding about what is the ratio of L by D means to us for an aerodynamics or for a flight mechanics man. Typically, we try to understand what is the significance of having CL by CD maximum, but nowhere explicitly we talk about any rotational motion. Now see, when you come to stability and control, this will not work. Okay. How will you see this? For example, in uh, performance, if we are visualizing a wing, we are only concerned about one, how CL is modeled, CL0 plus CL alpha into alpha. That is, you know, we have CL versus alpha graph. And why it was required from a performance point of view? Because I wanted to know, if required, to generate this much of CL, what is the angle of attack required? I will, I, and I will ensure that the angle of attack is not here. It should be somewhere here, somewhere here in the linear zone. It should not go into the stall. So that was the only thing we were looking for, an aerofoil. Uh, explicitly, we would like to know that whether the aerofoil is a cambered or symmetric, depending upon what is the value of CL0 and how I can see model CL. With a specific goal in performance, I want to know whether the CL which is required to balance lift equal to weight can be achieved with a requisite alpha or not. And the alpha should be such that it doesn't go into the stall. Right? So that was the performance perception. But now, from stability and control point of view, same wing, no more, approach will be different. What we like to know, first of all, where is the aerodynamic center, which, is, which was also there here in this case also, last case performance also. And if we recall, uh, the aerodynamic center is a fictitious point about which the pitching moment is independent of angle of attack. And typically it is at C by 4 or quarter quad point. That is, if I tell this is as a quad, then this will be C by 4, right? So one is, yes, we need to know the aerodynamic center. Second thing, which is extremely important, is how the moment variation 
about a point, about let's say C by 4, it could be about leading edge of the of the aerofoil, it could be leading edge of the aerofoil. At any point, if I know, I can easily find out about any other point. In stability and control, we are not only interested in what is the aerodynamic center, we are also interested in the moment variation because of our dynamic forces and about any point. And as you know, this aerodynamic center is a point about which moment is independent of angle of attack. So it is comfort, a convenient way to represent the effect of all the aerodynamics or aerodynamic forces generated around the aerofoil on the wing and they are represented conveniently at aerodynamic center C by 4. And as you know, ideally when there is a pressure distribution over the aerofoil, so typically let us say something like this. And if you want to transfer the resultant of all this thing about a point or to a point C by 4, you need to transfer it with a force, net force and a moment. Okay? And that is why it is extremely important to also know what is CMAC wing. This was never considered in performance. What is CMAC wing? Let us have some understanding. We have already explained this and we will be showing you those lectures, but just to have a little bit of warm up for newcomers. If say this is an aerofoil which is symmetric, then you know, let us say at alpha equal to 0, if there is a pressure distribution and for that let us say net force on the top surface I can get by integrating the pressure distribution over the area. Similarly, in the bottom surface we will also have in this direction, right? And if it is symmetric, these two points will, or these two forces, resultant forces will be on the same point. Okay? And they cancel each other, and that is why you say at alpha equal to zero, the net force will be zero, and net moment also will be zero, okay, about any point. But if it is a cambered aerofoil, you will find on the top surface, if the force is in the direction, the bottom surface is F1, this is F2, the bottom surface is not aligned with the top surface resultant and so net force will be definitely F1 minus F2. However, when I try to shift this point, shift these forces to a point C by 4, so now when I shift this force from here to here, I have to shift it by the force and the moment. So this also here force and the moment. So finally what we will find, this will have camera and a foil at C by 4, we will have CL, CD and CM AC wing. What is CMAC wing? It is a concentrated moment that came into existence because we are transferring all these forces to a point C by 4, right? And that is an important thing which we must understand when you are studying stability and control. Okay. Typically, for a cambered aerofoil, the sign, these values are minus, let's say, 0 0.01 to minus minus 0.1, typical number. So, if I see this cambered aerofoil, it has a considerable moment about C by 4, which has a negative sign. And we know, as a pitching moment is concerned, the convention is nose up is positive, nose down is negative, right? So this is the difference, one major difference that I see that there will be CMAC wing uh, that is going to create an effect in terms of the angular motion of the airplane, okay? Now let us go a little bit more into it before we go for our regular uh, systematic buildup. So let us now uh, do an experiment. This is a camber aerofoil and you know this is CLCD and the CMAC wing and we know CMAC wing is negative. Suppose if I throw this cambered aerofoil or a wing made up of cambered aerofoil, if I throw it, what will happen? Now there are two cases I will discuss. One, assume that the CG is ahead of C by 4. 
Why you have brought in CG now? Because you know in free space, when I throw something, or somebody is flying, some aircraft is flying, this rotation will be about an axis passing through the center of gravity, right? In free space, it rotates about an axis passing through center of gravity. So now let's say, when I'm throwing this wing made up of camber or foil, and if the CG is ahead of it, what sort of response do you expect? First of all, I'll ask a question. Is it statically stable? Right? As I was telling, let us do an experiment. This is a wing made up of a cambodero foil, and let's say this size, and I'm just throwing it in here. The first question which comes to my mind is, is this configuration statically stable or not? And remember, what is the meaning of static stability? Static stability means if a body is disturbed from its equilibrium state, and if it has initial tendency to come back to the equilibrium, we say it has static stability, right? Now see here, if I am throwing it like this, and let's say some disturbance of delta alpha is here, okay? Then what this delta alpha will do? You know that it will give additional lift delta CL, also delta CD, but I am taking delta CL being, being predominant in this case. And then what happens? This delta CL will do what? It will give a nose down moment, okay? Correct? That means it will try to nullify this disturbance. It will try to come again back to the alpha equal to zero, which was perhaps this is the case, right? So it will try to give a nose down moment. So it has initial tendency to counter this disturbance, initial tendency to come back to alpha equal to zero, initial tendency to come back to its equilibrium. So this is a statically stable case. And we know very well, as long as aerodynamic center is behind center of gravity, it will be statically stable. If it was the other situation, if AC was here and CG was here, then you could see slight disturbance delta alpha, there will be a delta CL here, and that will give a nose up moment, and the angle disturbance, angular disturbance will further increase, and it will not have an initial tendency to come back to alpha equal to zero or alpha equilibrium, so it is statically unstable, right? This is one thing. Now let us see what is this CMAC will be doing, right? CMAC wing will do. CMAC being negative for camber foil. So if I throw it, CMAC negative means it will try to always give a constant negative moment. It is not proportional to angle of attack. It will constant negative moment. So the airplane or the wing here will have a tendency to do like this it will be very difficult to trim, even if it is statically stable, right? If I go back again, we define CL as lift divided by half rho V square S. We say lift non-dimensionalized by dynamic pressure and area, okay? Similarly, CD we know, it's a drag divided by half, rho v square s. Again, you could see here, cd is nothing but, which, I, which we term as drag coefficient, is nothing but total drag, non-dimensionalized with dynamic pressure and area. Now, what is cm? Cm is the pitching moment. What is this pitching moment? Let us understand. If this is the airplane, and let's say this is the CG, and let me draw it, I'll explain. These are XYZ axis passing through center of gravity. The pitching moment is motion about Y axis. So it goes up, sign is positive, goes down, sign is negative. 
yoy and about z axis we say yawing motion that is if this is the z axis this is a yawing motion if the right wing going back that means yawing moment is positive left wing going back yawing moment is negative and about x axis is the roll so if right wing going down it is a positive rolling moment and left wing going down it is a negative rolling moment right we are at present talking about pitching moment which is essentially motion about y axis okay correct nose of positive nose of negative so what is cm cm is again it's a pitching moment coefficient like it was lift coefficient it is pitching moment coefficient right how do i define it is the total pitching moment about center of gravity divided by half rho v square s this is the dynamic pressure into area reference area but we have to non dimensionalize this so we have to put a length term so generally we put mean aerodynamic curve okay so this is the definition of cm correct now let us see i know cm positive nose up cm negative nose down if i plot cm versus alpha let's say for this case i take a symmetric aerofoil or to be more precise wing having symmetric aerofoil and let's say this is c by 4 and let's say this is cg location xcg okay xcg 1 i put now here if i want to plot qualitatively the variation of cm and alpha how do i do that see first i i have to assume with my understanding that low angle of attack cm versus alpha variation will be linear right okay so if it's a linear if a line is if i drawing a line if i'm trying to draw a line i need to know its intercept and slope okay so what is the slope between cm and alpha that will first try to see in terms of sign from here what do you see if i give him some alpha to this wing having a symmetric aerofoil immediately i know there will be a delta cl and that will give me a negative moment or pitch down moment that means for a positive alpha i will have a negative moment similarly for a negative alpha i will have a positive pitching moment is it clear so this much i know that the cm alpha that is delta cm by delta alpha or if i write dcm by d alpha this sign should be negative okay so once i know this slope is negative i need to find out what is the intercept because we have assumed that cm versus alpha variation is linear to get an intercept means i need to know what is the value of cm at alpha equal to 0 since this is a symmetric aerofoil wing i know at alpha equal to 0 there won't be any cl right and there is no cmsc also for a symmetric wing so at alpha equal to 0 cm will be always 0 so this is the intercept here and slope is negative so i draw this curve cm versus alpha like this check it here the slope is negative yes slope is negative and at intercept at alpha equal to 0 there won't be any cl and there is no cmsc because it is symmetric aerofoil wing so that will be zero so this is the line for symmetric aerofoil wing right now let us see we do one change this is important please be careful what do we do is we now take a camber aerofoil and ac is exactly here where earlier it was there and cg is also exactly where earlier it was there right only the aerofoil is changed nothing has changed in this case if you see again the slope cm versus alpha will be what positive or negative you could see here if i give a disturbance 
this is like this and nose down moment and I know that since the aerodynamic center is behind center of gravity it will be statically stable as we see here the aerodynamic center is behind center of gravity and you know it will be statically stable so in our language now we say the dcm by d alpha or cm alpha will be negative so slope will be negative no problem but what about at alpha equal to zero what will happen that is the question now see here the moment i draw a camber data foil i should also understand it will have cmac some negative value which i have not drawn earlier so at alpha equal to zero what will happen let's see if i see cl versus alpha for a camber data foil at alpha equal to zero it will always have some positive lift coefficient cl not correct so that will also act here or let me draw a neat diagram so that you are not confused so we are trying to find out at alpha equal to 0 we know that at alpha equal to 0 there will be cmac wing which is less than 0 not alpha equal to zero, what happened? At alpha equal to zero, you could see from this graph, for a camber data foil, there will be a positive lift coefficient. I name it as CL0. So this CL0 will act here. For a symmetric data foil, this CL0 value will be zero. But for a camber data foil, there will be a positive lift coefficient, this. This will do what? This will also give a nose down moment, which is CL0 into, let this distance be x bar that is x bar and I put a minus sign if I take x bar positive x bar is nothing but this physical distance divided by say cos clear see a lot into x bar and if I assume this sign to be positive then I need to generate a negative moment represent a negative moment because the C L naught will give a nose down moment is it clear so at alpha equal to 0, we have CL0 into x bar. I put absolute sign so that no confusion with sign as long as you put a minus sign here. Over and above what will be there? Over and above CM AC wing is here. CM AC wing. So this will be basically your CM at alpha equal to 0. Are you clear with this? I repeat, this is a camber data foil. At alpha equal to 0, there will be a CL0, which I know for a camber data foil, CL versus alpha looks like this. So this CL0 into this physical distance, which I have non-dimensionalized with chord, and that will give a nose down moment. So we have put this term. Okay. If you have any confusion, we can put a bar here and put this minus sign, then no confusion. This is the physical distance between AC and CG, non-dimensionalized with the chord. So that one moment will come at alpha equal to zero. In addition, do not forget, because of the camber data foil, CMAC wing is already there, so that also will get added. So total of this, see, it will generate a large negative negative value okay to so see that this part is negative this will s is behind cg it is statically stable so it will give a nose down moment so negative value cmac wing is always negative for a camber aerofoil the total will be negative so if i come back here for a camber aerofoil for this slope will be negative which ensures statically stable but the intercept will be negative this is for cambered aerofoil wing. See, it has static stability because AC of the wing is behind CG of the wing. However, because it's cambered aerofoil, at alpha equal to zero, it will have contribution of negative moment because of CL0 and because of concentrated CMAC wing. So this intercept will be negative. 
Now, what is the repercussion of this? Why you want to fly? You want to fly at an angle of attack so that it produces enough lift to balance weight. Now, if you are flying at this point, which is negative angle of attack, you may not be able to generate that much of lift, even if it is cambered, to produce the enough force for a restricted speed to balance the weight. You know? So that is why, uh, why I have selected this point? Because this is, these are called trim points. Why they are called trim points? You will be knowing it explicitly. Why they are called trim points? Because these are the equilibrium point at which net moment, net force is zero. Or in this case, net moment is zero. Right? So I, if I want to fly cruise, I want the moment should be zero. So my trim point for this aerofoil configuration is this. For symmetric, it is this. For symmetric, unfortunately, alpha equal to zero. So I won't be able to produce any lift. So this is meaningless for me. For a camber, theoretically speaking, some lift you generate because of some angle here. But that is not a good way of flying. You need higher velocities. So this is also not accepted for us. What we look for is, can I configure the whole airplane so that CM and alpha variation looks like this? That is, it is slope is negative, so statically stable. If slope is negative, slope, so statically stable. And CM at alpha equal to 0, which we call CM0, is greater than 0. What is the advantage here? This variation will tell you that, yes, statically stable, but trim point is at a positive angle of attack, so I can easily generate a configuration where lift equal to weight and thrust equal to drag. That is, I can fly the machine at a positive angle and give enough speed so that, or enough dynamic pressure so that I get enough lift to produce force which balances the weight. Okay? So my aim is to fly at a positive angle of attack. So that is why most of the Airplane will be designed in such a manner that CM versus alpha graph is like this, or in a nutshell, that CM naught is greater than zero and CM alpha is less than zero. CM alpha less than zero ensures it is statically stable, and CM naught greater than zero ensures that you can trim the airplane at a positive angle of attack. If CM naught was not zero, if it was somewhere here, even if it was statically stable, the slope was negative, you are not able to trim it at positive angle of attack. This is angle of attack is less than zero. We don't want that. We want this. And trim my airplane at alpha equal to zero. So what are the conditions I must have? For static stability, I must ensure CM alpha less than zero. And for trim at positive alpha, I must ensure CM naught is greater than zero. How much CM alpha? How much CM naught? These are matter of details. And as you go through the lectures, you'll get this will be answer. Is it clear? So up to this point, this is totally warm up. You have got enough exposure, what you are going to have for first 10, 15 lectures. And my lectures on static stability will continue after one or two lectures of this. And then we suddenly enter into, again, with something called dynamic stability or lateral stability, directional stability. I don't want to mix up your mind. Focus here, try to understand the static stability concept. And once my other four, seven, or around seven lectures are over, we'll be again discussing about little more on this topic in the lateral mode, directional mode, and we'll have a nice time. We'll be solving lots of examples in this course. Please remember, a lot of numerical problem we'll be solving here. Maybe in a week, if there are four lectures, there might be one or two numerical lectures or lectures solving a numerical. Okay, so please, when you are watching my video, take a notebook, calculator, pen, and try to solve those problems. Okay, thank you very much.